Hi guys and welcome back to another video. In this one, we're going to be going over the best way, in my opinion, to mock a HTTP request using C Sharp. Now, before we dive into that, I'll show you the problem. When we make a HTTP request, we use our HTTP client. And in our HTTP client, the thing that actually sends to the request is what's called a HTTP message handler. This has the send async function, but it's also an abstract class and this method is protected. Now, the mocking framework, although it's fantastic, is not particularly great at doing anything with the protected keyword or the abstract keyword. It's much better at working with public classes and interfaces. But we can work around this by creating our own instance of this message handler. So what we'll do is we'll create a new class and we'll call this our test message handler. And we're going to tell this to inherit from our HTTP message handler. This has the one function, send async. But before we do anything else, we're going to create a variable, which is going to be a HTTP response message. And we'll call this our response message. And then we're also going to have a function, which is going to be internal. And thinking about it, we can also make our class internal. And this will do turn a void and we'll call it set response. This will also take a HTTP response message, response message. And all we'll do is set our response message equal to our response message. In our send async, when this gets called, we will return a task dot from result and return our response message. Now in our controller, we've got a very, very simple implementation. All we've got is we're calling a URL, Google, and we're getting the response. So in our test, if we want to mock this, what we can do is create a new instance of our handler. So set that equal to a new test message handler. We will create a new response object. So a new HTTP response message. And we'll for now tell this to return a not found. And then we set our handler set response and pass in response. Then when we create our client, our new HTTP client, and we'll pass in our handler and then pass that client into our controller. Now, when we run this, you'll see us go to our weather forecast controller and I'll put another breakpoint there and we'll just continue it. And you'll see here, we've successfully mocked it and this request now returns not found, which is exactly what we wanted. Now, there is one fairly big downside to this. What if in a real life situation, you actually had multiple requests? So, Let's say you do this first, and then in your integration test, we also have secondary response. And for whatever reason, we want to mock this to return, let's say, a not found. And we want to be able to handle that. If we use our current test implementation, this won't work. Because what it's going to do is we will run it through here, and they will both return not found, which isn't what we want. But we can make improvements to our test message handler and we can change this to a queue. And by having this as a queue of HTTP response message, and I'll just make the variable changes as well. So the name is a little bit better, response messages. We can here, rather than just setting that equal to that, we can say our response messages dot, and then we will on queue our response message. And then here, when we return it, we will DQ our response message. If we now go back to our unit test, if we want a second message, we can just create a second message. So we'll call this response two because naming is hard. And we will set this to gone. And now if we run this again and we go and debug it,
I get an error that I didn't quite expect, and I'm not sure why. Let me double check this. Oh, I know the problem. Don't forget to set this equal to a new queue. Otherwise, when it tries to add it, it doesn't exist. Now, let's try and run that again. I'll probably leave that in the video. It'd be quite useful to see. And here we go. Now we get to here. Our first HTTP request now returns a 404, not found, because that's what we told it to do here. And then our second one will return gone. And we can do this as many times as you like. If we had another request, another request, another request, we can just continue adding it to the queue and removing it when when we uh, call the test async, uh, sorry, send async function. That's going to be the end of this video, guys. I really hope you found it useful. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you found it useful. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.